Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video. As always, I'm Garrett, and today we are gonna be talking about the top 10 ways to save money during college. So if you didn't know, currently I am a senior in college, so I've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way of ways that I've blundered and made mistakes with my money and ways where I found really good ways to save money and even earn money. So before we get into this, as always, if you like this video, hit the like button down below and always subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos I come out with each and every week. Anyways, let's get into it. Now, my first tip to save money in college is to choose the right school. So, of course, when you're looking at schools, you're going to want schools that are really good in the degree area, field of focus that you're looking into. So, if you're looking into engineering, you want to go to a good engineering school. If you want to be an artist, you want to go to a good artist school. Whatever it is, you want to choose the right school. However, if you go to school in-state as opposed to going out-of-state, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. Usually, tuitions when you go out of state are up to 50% more than if you were to just stay at school at home. The reason for this is in-state schools expect that you've lived there for a while and yourself or your families have been paying taxes in that state and some of those tax dollars have been going straight to the school. However, if you're coming in from out of state, the schools realize that they have not been earning this income from you and they charge you a higher rate. And a lot of the tuition that these schools make is from out of state tuition. It's a big chunk of their profits come from this. However, the savings don't just stop there. You can save even more by attending a two-year community college before going to a state school. The reason for this, that these are even cheaper, is because they kind of cut down all the fluff that colleges might have. Maybe they spend less on having a bunch of campuses, a bunch of professors. They really save money everywhere that they can. And that's fine because these savings get passed on to you, the students. The tuition at your local community college is likely one third of the price of if you went to an in-state school. So just imagine if you went to an out-of-state school, it would be even more. Usually these community colleges cost around $3,500 while an in-state school would be about $10,000 per year. And my tip number two kind of plays off number one and it is to live at home. So obviously if you're going to live at home, you're going to want to stay close probably in-state. And the reason for this is the amount of savings you can get from living at home, from not having to pay for housing and rent are enormous. Most students going to a four-year school spend about $45,000 during their time in college on dorms alone. And instead, if they live in townhouses or apartments off campus, it can be even more, especially in big areas. In addition to the housing costs, there's a lot of other savings that you'll find here and there, such as Maybe you have family members that do laundry all together, so you can save money on that. Groceries, of course, is a big cost for anyone, let alone a college student. So being able to cut down on that and usually eating at home more is a great way to save money. And tip number three here is no surprise, but apply for scholarships. But here's the thing. Don't just apply for scholarships before going to college. Apply while also in college. You can find hundreds of websites out there where you type in your information all about yourself and then they'll search through thousands of records and find all the scholarships that best fit your circumstances. So that way you're not wasting your time filling out scholarships that you have no chance to get or looking for scholarships all over the place and only finding a few here and there. You instantly like that get thousands of them recommended to you that you have a good chance to win. So like I said, there are plenty of scholarship opportunities while you are currently in school as well. It doesn't matter if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, they're still open to you. A lot of these scholarships are based off your GPA or maybe uh, campus activities that you're doing and groups that you're part of, but there's even more qualifications than that. I have experience with this and I'm very passionate about it because I won a couple of scholarships my junior year that were very lucrative. I never thought I was gonna win them. It, I only had to fill out a form that my university sent to me to apply for a bunch of scholarships all at once. Like I said, again, applied to me for about 50 scholarships, maybe even more, and I won just a couple of them, but they were big ones that were reoccurring as well. And like I said, never thought I was gonna win these. I only put in maybe an hour or less of effort into this, and it was totally worth it. So I, I really tell everyone that I know that they should do this whenever they get a chance to because it can really save you a lot of money in the long run. I only wish I had started doing this earlier because before college I did not do like any scholarships and I definitely should have. I may have a couple more thousand dollars in my pocket if I would have done that. 
Tip number four is another one I have a lot of experience with, and that is at the beginning of each semester when the university tells you what supplies and books you need to get, don't get them. You should really wait until at least the first day or until you get an email before the year from your professor or your teacher with a syllabus. The reason for this is these teachers, they can often change their mind on what material they want to use. So you should really wait until the first class when they tell you. Otherwise, you may end up buying a book or a revision of a book that you don't need. And that way, you just wasted all your money on a book you don't need. And you got to buy the actual book again. You do not want to do this. I personally haven't done it. I always wait until the first day, but I've seen people do it. And I feel horrible when I see them buy a book that they don't need. And I also have a couple sub tips here for when you're buying your books. Always buy used. If you buy new, the value of the book's going to go down after you use it. And who cares? It's a textbook. Uh, just get a used one. It'll be cheaper. You're probably never going to read it again, or you're going to end up selling it back. So if you sell it back new, you're going to have the, it's going to be used because you used it, right? So you're going to sell it for the used price anyway. So you might as well do that. Also, when you're buying your book, try checking out different sites in that. Look at, I would say Chegg's a good one, eBay's a good one. I know there's other ones out there, so if you guys have any other suggestions, link them down in the comments down below so everyone else can kind of see what else to use. Make sure you're getting the best price. And your university bookstore doesn't always have the best price, but oftentimes they'll have a match. So if on eBay or Chegg or something, they say it's cheaper on there and you show them, they'll give you that price and they'll match that price. But the one way you can get your books even cheaper is by, if you know someone who took the class before, ask your friends who are in the program, or if it's a general education course, ask anyone you know, see if they have the book that you might need. And if they do, you might be able to get it for free and borrow it from them and give it back to them at the end of the semester. It's a win-win and they can still sell the book afterwards. And maybe you buy them lunch or something, give them a couple of bucks as a thank you for letting you borrow that and saving you potentially a lot of money. Now, tip number five is one that anyone can use, but it's really crucial to college students. And I alluded to it earlier, and it's to not eat out so often. Eating out can really bite into your budget. It's really expensive, and it really adds up over time, especially if you're using features such as like Grubhub, where you're adding delivery fees on top of it, and fees on top of fees on top of fees until you have a laundry list of a bill, and you all you did was get Chipotle. Just go pick it up if you really want to get Chipotle. But other than that, try to start making food at home. It can really save you a lot of money. And I know it's the last thing you want to do after you have a weird schedule. You're out late at night with the night class and you got to come home and make dinner. No one wants to do that. So what I would recommend is actually prep your food in advance. So, for example, a lot of people do this. You can search it up on YouTube. But on a Sunday, uh, usually a Sunday, you would prep all your food for the entire week so you would batch cook everything so let's say chicken you would cook all your chicken all at once you kind of put everything in different containers for each meal for each day and that way you have a little snack or a meal to eat whenever you need to and you just pull it out of the refrigerator as opposed to just grabbing a bag of doritos or whatever's most convenient and often not healthy at all either so another pro of this is you're probably eating healthier which in college, it's a great thing. You start eating healthier, you start good habits for life. So this is a great tip all around. My next tip here is an interesting one, I think, and that is to get a job, but not just any job, but a job related to your field of study. The reason for this is anyone can go get a job at Subway or any of your like minimum wage, normal college jobs, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you need to do, you can do that. But if you're going to college, you're paying to learn something. You're learning to get a skill, learn a new skill set, so you can market yourself to employers and be worth more money, right? We all want a job that's high paying and great, right? So when you're going to college, you're still learning this. Just because you don't have the degree yet doesn't mean you don't know some of this stuff, especially if you're an upperclassman. So what I recommend is trying to apply at different places for internships or co-ops that often will pay more than a lot of these minimum wage jobs. In addition to that, you're also earning a lot of experience in working in your industry. So if you do end up getting hired at a place that fits your degree field, then you're getting a lot of experience to put on a resume to say that you worked in the industry 
as well. You may have a foot in the door at that company and you might even get hired and have a full-time job. Because if they know that you're a good worker, that you fit really well with their team, why wouldn't they hire you? They've already put you through any kind of training they've had to do, so they're saving a lot of money on that. And they know that you're a good product and they want you working for them. Tip number seven is to get good grades. Why do we need to get good grades? Well, there's many reasons for that, but in the case of saving money, the reason for that is that auto insurers will give you lower rates on your car insurance if you have better grades. Auto insurers run a lot of research on their customers. Their research shows that younger drivers tend to be worse drivers. For that reason, they have higher rates than any other age group. However, their research also shows that younger drivers who have good grades tend to have better driving records than those who have worse grades. So for this reason, they offer good student discounts to good drivers who also have lower rates because of this. If you already have good grades right now and you haven't taken advantage of this yet, you can call up your auto insurer right now and ask them, hey, if I show you guys my grades, my transcripts, can I get lower car insurance rate? And the answer will most likely be yes. So don't waste any time. Go ahead and do that right now. Pause the video and make sure you're saving money on your car insurance. But not before you leave a like and a subscribe on this channel. I'd really appreciate it as we spend a lot of time making these videos. And I don't have much time to begin with being a student, of course, as we talked about. So it would really mean a lot if you guys went ahead and did that. Anyways, let's get to number eight. So car insurance isn't the only thing that students can save money on. There are hundreds, if not thousands of things students can save money on for simply just being a student, such as movie theaters, restaurants, clothing stores, phone companies, and more tech companies than you can count. Because there's so many, I can't name them all. So I'd recommend Googling them and checking out everything that offers student discounts. Because odds are you use a lot of these places. For example, a couple of my favorites are Amazon, which offers a Prime version of Amazon Prime. Apple, which offers discounts on all of their electronics that students can use. As well as with some subscription services. And a big one that a lot of people use is both Spotify and Hulu. Uh, these subscription services are great. I love using them. And the main reason I brought it up is because of our next topic, which is tip number nine, cancel any subscription service you're not using. How many subscription services do you have? It's probably more than you actually know. And odds are you're probably forgetting one that you have. In particular, entertainment subscriptions, such as your Hulus, your Netflixes, your Disney Primes, you're probably not using those all at once, especially if you're the only one using them. So what I like to do is when I'm using those services, I cancel out or pause the subscriptions on the ones that I'm not using. The reason for this is I'm a college student. I'm very busy, I work, I go to school, and now I make YouTube videos. So I don't have that much time to watch too many shows and odds are I'm probably only watching one show at a time. So for that reason, if I'm watching a show on Hulu, why pay for Netflix still? I can pause it and save money on not having to pay for that and resume it back up back when I'm using it and watching whatever show I wanna watch on there. And pausing and canceling subscription services is not limited to just these kind. If you have any kind of audiobooks or any kind of software services you're not using, pause them if you're not using them and then join them back later when you need to. Or if you realize you don't need them anymore, just cancel them outright and save yourself some money. And now for the grand finale. My 10th and final tip can also be used by anyone, not just college students. And it's definitely a topic that I wanna to talk about more in the future on this channel, and that is cash back credit cards. Cash back credit cards are cards that give you money back on each purchase you make. For example, if you buy something for $100 and you have a cash back card that gives you 2% cash back, you'll get $2 back for making that purchase. So every purchase you make, you get maybe a couple dollars or a couple cents depending on the amount of the purchase. With the cash back you get from these cards, you can do whatever you want with it. But I'd recommend using it to save up, put into savings, investing, or just pay off your bills that you need to. My personal favorite cash back card is the City Double Cash card, which gives you 2% cash back, 1% as you pay, and 1% when you pay off your bill. This is very good for a cash back card that covers everything. So this is 2% on any meals you buy, any groceries, anything. And if you've never applied for a credit card before, now's a great time to do it. I recommend signing up for a credit card as soon as you possibly can. As soon as you turn 18, the lowest age you can get a credit card, that's when I think anyone should get a credit card. So that way you can start building up credit. It's very easy to sign up for these cards and as long as you use them responsibly, 
you will be fine. The key word is responsibly and only using money that you currently have and not using it as to kick the can down the road and have to pay off that money at a higher interest rate later on. So we just got through 10 tips on ways to save money during college. I'm sure there are plenty more out there. So if you guys have any tips of your own that I didn't cover in this video, please leave them down in the description down below in the comments so that others can see them and I would like to see what I missed as well. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe button as always, and I'll see you in the next one.